Rain lashed the windows of Samantha Ray's corner office, blurring the neon-limbed skyline of downtown Chicago. She sat hunched over her mahogany desk, the glow of her laptop screen throwing harsh shadows across her elegant features. Another late night. Another case consuming her. But this was no ordinary case. This one was personal. Samantha's fingers hovered over the keyboard, trembling slightly. The email glared accusingly from the screen. Subject. Your twin sister. Her heart stumbled. Twin sister. The words didn't belong in the same sentence. The same universe. And yet. With a shaking hand, Samantha clicked open the message. A single image unfurled. Two baby girls, nestled in a bassinet. Identical cherubic faces, downy hair. Mirror images. Samantha's breath snagged in her throat. It was like looking at a photograph of herself. But that was impossible. She was an only child. Wasn't she? Confusion and disbelief warred within her. Her parents had died when she was only five. A car accident on an icy road. Her grandmother had raised her and never once mentioned a sister. A twin. Samantha's eyes dropped to the message below the photo. Samantha, I know this must come as a shock. I'm Stella, your twin sister. I was given up for adoption at birth. I've been searching for you for years. Please, I need to meet you. I've attached my contact information. Yours, Stella. Samantha slumped back in her leather chair, pulse pounding. Her whole life, she'd felt a strange incompleteness. A yearning she couldn't name as if some essential part of herself were missing. And now, she knew why. With trembling fingers, Samantha picked up the phone, dialed the number on the screen. It rang once. Twice. Hello? A voice answered. Soft, hesitant, achingly familiar. Samantha swallowed hard. Stella? It's Samantha. Your, your sister. A hitch of breath. A muffled sob. Samantha, dot, da. Oh, God, Samantha. I didn't think. I hoped. I know. Samantha gripped the phone tighter, vision blurring. I never knew about you. But now, now I need to know everything. And so the dam broke. Tears and laughter, confessions and revelations. The childhood photos Stella's adoptive parents had given her. The DNA test she'd taken desperate for answers. They talked for hours, souls reaching across the void of years and secrets. By the time they hung up, Samantha's cheeks were wet. Her chest ached. But beneath it all, a flicker of warmth. Of belonging. She had a sister. She wasn't alone. They arranged to meet the following weekend. Stella would fly up from Savannah with her husband, Adam. They'd rented a lake house, a place to reconnect away from the city chaos. As Samantha hung up, she caught sight of her reflection in the window. The same green eyes that had sparkled from the photo. The same high cheekbones defined jaw dot boy. But no longer alone. No longer singular. She was a twin. And her other half was coming home. The days crept by in a haze of anticipation and nerves. Samantha threw herself into her case, a nasty pharmaceutical lawsuit, trying to still the questions churning in her gut. Why had her parents given Stella up? Why had no one ever told her? How different would her life have been, with a sister by her side? But there were no answers. Only the aching absence, now thrown into sharp relief. When Friday finally dawned, Samantha was a jangle of nerves. She packed hurriedly, fingers fumbling. Stomach nodded. As she stepped onto her balcony to wait for her Uber to the airport, she paused, looked out over the steel and concrete canyons of the city she'd made her own. She'd come here for law school and never looked back. Submerged herself in work, in ambition. A life of solitude and success. But suddenly it all felt hollow, empty, as if she'd been living half a life and never even known it. Her phone buzzed. The Uber was waiting. Samantha squared her shoulders, grabbed her bag. It was time to meet her destiny.
Her history. Her twin. The lake house was nestled in a riot of scarlet and amber. The autumn painted trees reflected in the still blue waters. Samantha stepped from the rental car, breathing deep the crisp, wood smoke tinged air. Then she saw her. Stella stood on the porch, haloed by the golden afternoon light, wearing Samantha's face, her eyes, her smile. Samantha. It was barely a whisper, but it reached across the leaf strewn lawn. And then they were running, colliding, clutching each other as if they'd never let go. Tears and laughter mingling, half formed sentences lost to the enormity of the moment. I can't believe it's you. Samantha leaned back, drinking in the mirrored wonder in Stella's eyes. It's like looking into my own face. I know. Stella reached up, traced Samantha's cheek. All my life, I felt like part of me was missing. And now, now, I'm whole. A throat cleared behind them. Samantha glanced over Stella's shoulder to see a man standing awkwardly by the front door. Tall, lean, with a shock of dark hair and striking blue eyes. Samantha, this is Adam. My husband. Stella turned, holding out a hand. He stepped forward, entwining his fingers with hers. It's wonderful to meet you, Samantha. His voice was low, melodic his grip warm and firm as he shook her hand. Stella hasn't stopped talking about you since she found you. Samantha flushed, a strange shiver running through her at his touch. I'm just... I'm just... I'm so blown away by all this. To suddenly have a sister, a brother-in-law. Well, you've got us now. Adam smiled, dimples creasing his cheeks. We're family. Family. The word settled into Samantha's chest, tentative and tender. Tears stung her eyes. She was part of a family, again. After all these years, the weekend passed in a haze of laughter, of shared memories and dreams. They cooked together, drank wine by the fireplace, took long walks through the blazing autumn woods. And through it all, Samantha felt a rising warmth, a sense of completeness. Stella was everything she could have hoped for in a sister. Funny, brilliant, compassionate. They finished each other's sentences, giggled over inside jokes that sprung up effortlessly. And Adam? Adam was charming, attentive. He coaxed out Samantha's stories, listened intently, made her feel seen, appreciated, understood. She tried to ignore the flutter in her stomach when he smiled at her. The electricity when their hands brushed passing the dinner rolls? He was her sister's husband. Her feelings were just a confused byproduct of this overwhelming reunion. They'd fade. Surely, they would fade. On their last night, they built a bonfire by the lake shore, marshmallows toasting on sticks, sparks spiraling into the star-dusted sky. Samantha leaned back on her elbows, watching the flames dance. Stella was curled into Adam's side, his arm draped around her shoulders. They looked so happy, so right together. Samantha's heart clenched. As if sensing her gaze, Adam glanced up, met her eyes over the fire. Something passed between them, unspoken and intense. Samantha looked away first, cheeks burning. Shame and confusion roiled in her gut. What was wrong with her? Adam was Stella's, her sister's love, her family. Anything else was unthinkable. Impossible, wasn't it? As they said their goodbyes the next morning, Stella clutched Samantha close. I'm so glad we found each other, she whispered. Promise you'll come visit us in Savannah soon. Samantha nodded against her sister's shoulder, throat tight. I promise. Stella pulled back eyes shining, pressed a kiss to Samantha's cheek. Then she was gone, tucked into Adam's side as they walked to their rental car. He glanced back once, blue eyes unreadable. Samantha hugged herself as she watched them drive away. The lake house suddenly felt too big, too quiet, empty. She packed quickly, a heaviness settling in her chest. The weekend had been a dream, a beautiful respite from her solitary life but now it was time to return to reality. To her job, her cases, her loneliness.
As she locked the door behind her, Samantha paused. Looked out over the lake, now steel gray under the overcast sky. She had it a sister. A family. But why did it still feel like something was missing? Two weeks later, Samantha was buried into positions when her cell phone buzzed. She glanced at the screen. Stella. Her heart leapt. They'd texted almost daily since the lake house, but a call in the middle of the workday was unusual. Hey, sis, she answered, smiling. What's up? Silence. Then, a ragged breath. Sam Dotty. Something's happened. Samantha sat up straight, ice washing through her veins at the crack in Stella's voice. What's wrong? Are you okay? It's Adam. A choked sob. He's, he's dead, Sam. Someone killed him. The phone slipped from Samantha's numb fingers. The world tilted, grayed at the edges. Adam. Dead. And just like that, the dream shattered. The flight to Savannah passed in a blur of turbulence and tears. Samantha stared unseeing out the window, Stella's broken sobs echoing in her head. Adam was dead. Murdered. It didn't seem real. He'd been so alive, so vital, just two weeks ago. Laughing by the bonfire, his arm around Stella. Looking at Samantha with those piercing blue eyes. Grief and guilt churned in her stomach. Guilt for the unspoken attraction that had hummed between them. Guilt for the tiny, treacherous part of her heart that had wondered. No, I am you. She clamped down on the thought. Adam was gone. Stella needed her. Everything else was meaningless in the face of that stark reality. A taxi ride through moss-draped streets, a walk up creaking porch steps, and then Samantha was standing in front of a red door. The door to Stella's life. A life now shattered by violence and loss. She raised a hand to knock, but the door flew open before her knuckles could connect. Stella stood there, eyes bloodshot, face splotchy and ravaged. Samantha, dot. It came out as a broken whisper, and then Stella was in her arms, body hitching with sobs. Samantha held her as the grief poured out, hot tears soaking her neck. She murmured wordless comfort. A litany of I'm here and I've got you. Stella clung to her like a lifeline. Like the twin she'd always been missing, the other half of her soul. When the storm finally passed, Samantha gently ushered Stella to the kitchen, sat her down at the table, and busied herself making tea, trying not to stare at the scattered reminders of Adam. His jacket thrown over a chair. A scribbled note on the fridge in his bold hand. The detritus of a life cut brutally short. Samantha set a steaming mug in front of Stella, then took a seat across from her, reached out to clasp her icy fingers. Tell me what happened, she said softly. Stella took a shuddering breath. He went for a run yesterday morning, like always. But he, he didn't come back. Fresh tears slid down her cheeks. She brushed them away with a shaking hand. The police found him in the park. He'd been, been stabbed. So much blood. She choked on a sob. Samantha squeezed her hand tighter. I'm so sorry, Stella. I can't imagine. I can't do this, Sam. Stella's eyes were wild, desperate. I can't. Can't live without him. He was everything to me. My whole world. I know. I know. No. Samantha's own eyes burned. She blinked hard. But I'm here now. I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. We'll get through this together. Stella's face crumpled. She lurched forward, collapsing into Samantha's arms again. Samantha rocked her gently, stroking her hair. Over Stella's shoulder, her gaze fell on a framed photo on the mantel. Adam and Stella on their wedding day, beaming at each other. So in love. So full of hope for the future. A future now snuffed out like a candle. Samantha's jaw clenched. Whoever had done this, whoever had ripped away her sister's happiness, they wouldn't get away with it. She'd make damn sure of that. The police were useless. Overwhelmed and understaffed, they'd shuffled through the house, asked perfunctory questions, made vague noises about ongoing investigations. But Samantha could see it in their eyes. 
This was just another case to them. Another file in a towering stack. They didn't care about Adam. Didn't care about the shattered woman sobbing in her sister's arms. So Samantha did what she did best. She started digging. She pored over Adam's emails, his text messages, talked to his friends, his colleagues at the architectural firm where he worked. Everyone loved Adam. He was charming, talented, funny. Not an end in the world. But someone had clearly hated him enough to stab him in broad daylight and leave him bleeding out on the jogging path. Samantha refused to believe it was random. Refused to let the police write it off as a mugging gone wrong. There had to be more to the story. And she was going to find it. The days passed in a haze of grief and grim determination. Samantha moved into Stella's guest room, unwilling to leave her sister alone for even a moment. Stella moved through the house like a ghost, pale and silent. She picked at her food, left Adam's clothes hanging in the closet, his toiletries scattered on the bathroom counter. As if she could preserve him through these traces of his presence. As if she could keep him alive by refusing to let him go. Samantha's heart ached for her. Ached for the vibrant, laughing woman who'd been so full of joy just weeks before. Stella was drowning in her grief and Samantha was terrified she'd disappear beneath the waves. So she threw herself into the investigation with a desperate fervor. Interviewed witnesses the police had glossed over. Tracked down leads they'd left dangling. And slowly, a picture began to emerge. A picture of secrets and shadows. It started with a series of cryptic texts from an unknown number. Texts Adam had deleted from his phone, but which Samantha managed to recover. I ain't I I uh. I ain't do this anymore, one read. It's too dangerous. We have to stop. You knew the risks, came the reply. You're in too deep to back out now. Samantha's heart pounded as she stared at the screen. What risks? What was Adam in too deep with? She kept digging. Found a pobox registered in Adam's name, one Stella knew nothing about. When she staked it out, she watched a nervous-looking man in a baseball cap slide a plain manila envelope through the slot. With shaking hands, Samantha retrieved the envelope, sliced it open with trembling fingers. Her blood ran cold. Surveillance photos? Grainy shots of Adam meeting with shadowy figures in dimly lit parking garages and seedy bars. Exchanging money. Packages. And guns. Large, menacing weapons that made Samantha's stomach turn. Adam. What did you get yourself into? She confronted Stella that night, photos and questions spilling out in a desperate torrent. Stella stared at the images, face crumpling. I don't. I don't understand, she whispered. Adam wasn't involved in anything illegal. He couldn't be. But the proof was damning. Irrefutable? Whatever Adam had been caught up in, it had clearly gotten him killed. Samantha's heart twisted as Stella dissolved into fresh sobs. She gathered her sister close, mind racing. She needed to get to the bottom of this. Needed to untangle the web of secrets Adam had left behind. Before they ensnared Stella as well. The next day, Samantha tracked down the man from the Poe box. Followed him to a seedy bar on the outskirts of town. She slid onto the stool next to him, signaled the bartender for a drink. The man eyed her warily. Do I know you? No. No, I wind and were. Samantha leaned in close. But you knew Adam. Adam Novak. Dot two. The man blanched. Glanced around furtively. I know what you're talking about. Don't lie to me. Samantha's voice was low, dangerous. She slid a surveillance photo across the bar. I know you were working with him. I know he was involved in something illegal. The man licked his lips. His hand trembled as he reached for his drink. Look, lady, I don't want any trouble. Then tell me the truth. Samantha's fingers dug into his arm. Tell me what got Adam killed. The man's eyes darted to the door. To the photo. To Samantha's fierce, unyielding face. He slumped in defeat. Guns, he whispered. Adam was running guns. Samantha's head spun. Adam, her charming, quick-witted brother-in-law. 
a gun runner. It seemed impossible. He got in over his head. The man continued, voice trembling. Pissed off the wrong people. I warned him, but he wouldn't listen. Who? Samantha demanded. Who did he piss off? The man shook his head. No way. I'm not ending up like Adam. He made to leave, but Samantha grabbed his arm. Please, she said, desperation cracking her voice. My sister, she deserves to know the truth. The man hesitated. Glanced at the photo again. Mancini, he said finally. Vincent Mancini. He runs the operation. Adam was skimming off the top. Thought Mancini wouldn't notice. He let out a humorless laugh. Mancini notices everything. Samantha's blood ran cold. Vincent Mancini title family. She knew that name. Everyone in Savannah knew that name. He was a ghost story. A demon. The bogeyman who pulled the strings of the city's underworld? And Adam had crossed him. Samantha's head spun as she stumbled out of the bar. The man's words echoed in her head. Guns. Mancini. Skimming off the top. It didn't make sense. Adam was an architect for God's sake. What was he doing mixed up with gangsters and gun runners? But the evidence was inescapable. The photos, the texts, the clandestine meetings. Adam had been living a double life. And it had gotten him killed. Samantha's stomach lurched. How was she going to tell Stella? How could she shatter her sister's memories, her love for her husband? But Stella deserved the truth. No matter how painful, Samantha squared her shoulders, drew in a shaking breath. She had to be strong now. For Stella, she had to finish what she'd started. That night, she laid it all out for Stella. The photos, the texts, the man's confession. She held her sister as the terrible truth sank in, as grief and disbelief gave way to a numb, heavy acceptance. I never knew. Stella whispered brokenly. I never suspected. Of course you didn't. Samantha smoothed Stella's hair back from her tear-stained face. He hid it well. But why? Stella's voice cracked. Why would he do this? Risk everything? Risk us? Samantha had no answers. Only a grim determination to find them. In the days that followed, she dug deeper. Leveraged every contact, every favor she'd accumulated in her years as a ruthless attorney. The picture that emerged was one of greed and hubris. Adam, in deep with Mancini, had gotten a taste for the lavish lifestyle the gun money provided. Fancy cars, expensive watches, all the trappings of wealth and status. All the things he couldn't afford on an architect's salary. So he'd gotten reckless. Started siphoning cash. Convinced he was too smart to get caught. He'd been wrong. Mancini's men had been tailing Adam for weeks, Samantha discovered. Building a case. Gathering proof of his betrayal. And when they'd had enough, they'd made him pay the ultimate price. Samantha's heart ached for Stella. For the betrayal. The shattered illusions. The life built on secrets and lies. But her resolve only hardened. She couldn't give Stella back the man she'd loved, but she could damn well give her justice. She started working late, building a case against Mancini and his organization. If the law couldn't nail him for Adam's murder, then she'd bring him down for everything else. Racketeering. Extortion. Gun running. She compiled evidence, reached out to witnesses. Slowly, painstakingly, constructed an airtight case. It consumed her. Possessed her. Every waking moment was dedicated to weaving the net that would ensnare Vincent Mancini. Stella watched her with a mixture of gratitude and fear. You're going to get yourself killed, she whispered one night as Samantha poured over a pile of documents. Mancini is dangerous. He has people everywhere. Samantha just shook her head, jaw set. I can't let him get away with this. With what he did to Adam. To you. Stella's eyes filled with tears. I can't lose you too, Sam. You're all I have left. Samantha reached out, gripped Stella's hand. You're not going to lose me, I promise. But even as the words left her lips, 
a chill skittered down her spine. She'd seen the darkness in this world, the depths of depravity, taking on a man like Mancini. It was like painting a target on her own back. Yet, what choice did she have? She couldn't abandon this fight. Abandon Stella? Not when she'd already lost so much. Two months to the day after Adam's murder, Samantha launched her offensive. She took her meticulously compiled evidence to the district attorney, to the FBI, laid out the vast tapestry of Mancini's crimes in damning, irrefutable detail, and then she sat back and waited for the hammer to fall. The reaction was swift and brutal. Arrests, seizures, a massive coordinated strike against Mancini's empire. It all came crashing down like a house of blood-stained cards. And at the center of it all, Vincent Mancini in handcuffs, face twisted with impotent rage as federal agents hauled him away. Samantha watched it unfold on the news, heart pounding, palms damp. She'd done it. She'd brought the untouchable Vincent Mancini to his knees. But even as triumph surged through her veins, a cold tendril of unease unfurled in her gut. Mancini would not go quietly would not forget the woman who'd orchestrated his downfall. He had reach, even from behind bars. Power and influence that extended far beyond the confines of a prison cell. And Samantha had just made herself his number one enemy. She jumped at a knock on the door. Stella, pale and wide-eyed, phone clutched in a white-knuckled grip. It's the FBI, she said hoarsely. Someone, someone tried to break into the house last night. They think it was one of Mancini's men. Samantha's blood ran cold. It was starting already. The agent was grim-faced, mouth set in a tight line. We're placing you both in protective custody, he said without preamble. Until the trial. Until we can be sure Mancini's network is fully dismantled. Samantha wanted to protest. To rage against the idea of hiding, of running. But one look at Stella's terrified face stopped the words in her throat. Her sister had endured enough, had lost enough. Samantha would not let her live in fear. Not for one more day. So she packed a bag, held Stella's trembling hand as they were whisked away to a nondescript safe house on the outskirts of the city. And there they waited. Waited for Mancini's trial, for his sentencing, for the day they could finally reclaim their lives. But even as the days bled into weeks, the specter of Vincent Mancini loomed large. Samantha saw his leering face in every shadow, heard the echo of his threats in every creak of the floorboards. He was behind bars, but was he truly powerless? Doubt gnawed at her. Paranoia crept in, insidious and relentless. The gunrunners, the shadows from Adam's secret life, how deep did it go? Who else lurked in the darkness, waiting to strike? Samantha lay awake night after night, mind spinning, skin crawling with phantom threat. She'd freed Stella from one monster. But what if she'd only delivered them into the clutches of others? The thought chilled her to the bone. Mancini's trial couldn't come soon enough. But when it finally arrived, it brought no relief. Only a sickening sense of deja vu got another knock on the door another grim-faced agent. But this time, the news spilling from his lips was enough to bring Samantha to her knees. Stella is missing, he said, voice heavy with urgency. One of our agents, he was working for Mancini. He betrayed us, took her. Samantha couldn't breathe, couldn't think. This couldn't be happening. Not again. She'd played by the rules, followed every protocol. She'd done everything right. And still, Mancini had outmaneuvered her. Samantha's world shattered. Stella, her sister, her twin, her other half, gone. Taken by the very evil she'd sworn to protect her from. She couldn't breathe. Couldn't think. Every cell in her body screamed in denial, in sickening, gutting horror. But beneath the shock, beneath the terror, a cold, hard core of rage ignited. Rage at Mancini, at the corrupt agent, at the cruel twist of fate that had ripped Stella from her side. Samantha clenched her fists, nails biting into her palms. 
welcomed the pain, the sharp clarity it brought. She would find Stella. She would save her sister. And God help anyone who stood in her way. The FBI swarmed like ants, barking orders, deploying teams. Samantha paced amidst the chaos, mind whirling. Time was against them. Every second that ticked by was another second Stella was in Mancini's clutches. Another second she was suffering, terrified, hurt, dying in. The thought made bile surge up Samantha's throat, made the edges of her vision pulse red. She couldn't fall apart, couldn't give in to the scream building in her chest. Stella needed her, needed her to be strong, to be smart, to think like Mancini. The agent, she bit out, rounding on the lead investigator, the one who took her. I need to know everything about him. The investigator blinked, taken aback by the steel in her voice. But he rallied quickly, pulling up a file on his tablet. Agent Daniel Rosen, he read grimly. Fifteen years with the Bureau. Stellar record, not a hint of impropriety, until now. Samantha scanned the information, brain buzzing. Financials? Any large deposits, any signs of Mancini buying him off? The investigator shook his head. Nothing obvious. Not so much as an unexplained lunch tab. Samantha chewed her lip, frustration warring with desperation. There had to be something. Some clue, some thread to unravel. Her gaze snagged on a detail, small and innocuous. A notation buried in a list of Rosen's personal effects, seized from his desk. A key to a storage unit across town. Dot e. Samantha's heart stuttered, then kicked into overdrive. There, she said, jabbing a finger at the screen. That unit, Dotty Yatsu. Has anyone searched it? The investigator frowned, scrolling through the file. Not yet. It was a low priority, given the circumstances. It's the top priority now, Samantha snapped. I need a team and I need access to that unit. Now, now? She didn't wait for a response. Just spun on her heel and stalked toward the door, purpose thrumming through her veins. This was it. The break she needed. She could feel it in her bones. Hold on, Stella, she thought fiercely. I'm coming. The storage facility was a grim squat building, all stained concrete and rusting metal. Samantha's heart pounded as she watched the FBI team work the lock, the screech of the door echoing like a gunshot in the tense silence. Then they were inside, flashlights sweeping over a jumble of boxes and furniture. Rosen's detritus, the mundane debris of a traitor's life. Samantha picked her way through the clutter, eyes straining in the gloom. She didn't know what she was looking for. But she knew she'd recognize it when she saw it. She had to. Stella's life depended on it. And then, in the far corner, a gleam of metal. A filing cabinet, padlocked and ominous. Samantha's breath caught. She surged forward, fingers scrabbling at the lock. An agent stepped up beside her, bolt cutters in hand. One sharp snap and the lock fell away. Samantha wrenched the drawer open, heart in her throat. Files? Tutting owl. Dozens of them, crammed in haphazard stacks. With shaking hands, Samantha pulled one free. Her blood ran cold. Surveillance photos. Of her. Of Stella. Of Adam. Candid shots, time-stamped in the weeks before his death. Rosen had been watching them. Stalking them. The photos blurred as hot. Stinging tears welled in Samantha's eyes. That bastard. That traitorous, murderous bastard. He'd known. He'd been in on it from the start. Mancini's mole, guiding Adam to slaughter. And now, he had Stella. Rage swelled like a crimson tide, blotting out thought, out reason. She wanted to scream, to break, to claw that festering rot from the world with her bare hands. But she couldn't. Not yet. She had to hold it together. For Stella. She grabbed another file. More photos spilled out. But this time, they weren't of Samantha, or her family. They were of Rosen, meeting with hard-eyed men in dark alleys. 
exchanging briefcases and furtive words. One face jumped out at Samantha, cold dread seizing her chest. She knew him, had seen his mug shot a hundred times as she built her case. Carlo Bianchi, Mancini's most ruthless enforcer, his head of special operations. Diane, and Rosen's partner in crime, apparently. The pieces fell into place with sickening clarity. Rosen and Bianchi, conspiring under the FBI's nose, orchestrating Adam's demise on Mancini's orders, and now taking Stella to finish the job, to silence the last voice crying out for justice. Samantha's nails bit into her palms, the pain grounding her, focusing her. She had a name now, a face, a target. She just had to find him before he snuffed out her sister's life, too. The manhunt consumed the next 12 hours. Every agent, every resource the FBI could muster thrown into the fray. Samantha refused to rest, to so much as blink. She pored over files, hounded contacts, chased down every scrap of intel on Carlo Bianchi's whereabouts. He was a ghost, a rumor. A bogeyman whispered about in the darkest corners of the criminal underworld. But even ghosts left traces. And Samantha was relentless. She found it just before dawn. A scribbled address in the margins of a surveillance log. A place Bianchi had been seen coming and going from in the weeks leading up to Adam's murder. A derelict warehouse on the edge of the city. The perfect place to hide and to kill. Samantha shoved down the surge of icy terror. She couldn't think about that. Couldn't let that image take root in her mind. Stella was alive. She had to be. And Samantha would walk through hell to bring her home. The assault team assembled before Samantha could blink. Heavily armed agents in tactical gear, stern-faced and coiled with lethal intent. They tried to make Samantha stay behind. To wait while they breached the warehouse and secured the scene. But she was done waiting. Done letting others fight this battle. Stella was her sister. Her flesh. Her blood. This was Samantha's fight. Her war. And she would see it through to the bitter end. She strapped on a Kevlar vest with shaking hands. Checked the pistol and agent thrust into her grip. The weight foreign and heavy. Then she was moving, stalking through the gray Pradon light the warehouse looming like a monstrous shadow ahead. Her heart pounded, blood roaring in her ears. Every step felt like a mile, an eternity. And then, the gunfire erupted. Deafening, staccato cracks, muzzles flashing in the dimness. Samantha hit the ground, instinct taking over. She crawled, elbows and knees scraping concrete, bullets whining overhead. Ahead, agents surged through a shattered door. Shouts, curses, the meaty thud of fists on flesh. Samantha scrambled inside into a cavernous space reeking of oil and dust. Packing crates towered, the darkness thick and pressed close. Her eyes strained, heart slamming against her ribs. Where was Stella? Where was her sister? A scream pierced the chaos. Raw, ragged, familiar. Samantha charged toward the sound. The whole world shrank to that single, agonized wail. She rounded a stack of crates, and there she was. Stella, bound to a chair, a gag cutting into the corners of her mouth, and Rosen standing over her, gun to her head. Don't move. Rosen snarled as Samantha skidded to a halt, weapon snapping up on pure instinct. One more step, and I paint the walls with her brains. Sheer. Animal panic exploded through Samantha's veins. No, not Stella. Please, God, not her sister. Stella's eyes locked on hers, wide and terrified above the gag. Tears streaked her face, her chest heaving with shallow, panicked breaths. Let her go, Samantha bit out, her voice shaking. It's over, Rosen. The FBI has this place surrounded. You've got nowhere to run. Rosen barked a laugh, high and mad. He dug the muzzle of the gun into Stella's temple, making her flinch. You think I care about getting away? All that matters is finishing the job. Ice clawed at Samantha's heart. Why? 
she whispered. Why, Adam? Why, my sister? What did we ever do to you? To me? Rosen's face twisted with ugly mirth. Nothing. You were just in the way. Mancini gave the order, and I followed it. Nausea churned in Samantha's gut. All this suffering, this destruction, on the whim of a madman. But your FBI, she snarled, desperately stalling for time. Where were the other agents? Why hadn't they found them yet? You're supposed to stop men like Mancini, not do their dirty work. And pass up all that money? Rosen sneered. Pass up the chance to have a man like Mancini owe me a favor? I don't think so. He cocked the hammer of the gun. Stella let out a muffled sob, her entire body shaking. I was never one of the good guys, Ms. Raid, I ought. And now, I'm going to finish this. Tie up every last loose end. Samantha's finger tightened on the trigger. Terror and fury warred in her chest, her vision tunneling to Rosen's sneering face. She had a shot. A split second, a single blink of an eye. But if she missed, if Rosen's reflexes were even a hair faster, Stella would die. Her twin, her other half, the only family she had left. Rosen's eyes glittered with malice. Say goodbye to your sister, Samantha. Stella squeezed her eyes shut, a single tear tracing down her cheek. And Samantha fired. The gun jolted in her hands. The report deafened, the acrid scent of gunpowder burning her nose. Rosen staggered back, a red hole blooming between his eyes. His gun clattered to the concrete. Then he crumpled, mouth sagging open, sightless gaze fixed on the shadowed rafters. Dead. Samantha's knees gave out. She half crawled, half fell to Stella's side, pawing at the ropes binding her with numb, clumsy fingers. Stella, she sobbed, finally working the gag free. Stella, oh God. And then Stella was in her arms, both of them weeping, clinging to each other like they'd never let go. You came for me, Stella wept into Samantha's neck. You saved me, Annie. Always, Samantha vowed fiercely, pressing desperate kisses to Stella's hair, her tear-stained face. I'll always come for you. Always. Around them, agents swarmed. Rosen's body was removed. Stella wrapped in a shock blanket. But Samantha barely registered the chaos. Her whole world had shrunk to the trembling woman in her arms, the living, breathing proof of her sister's survival. It was over. The nightmare, the fear, the soul-crushing grief. They were safe. They were together. And God help anyone who ever tried to tear them apart again. The days that followed passed in a haze of statements and debriefings, hushed conversations with stone-faced federal agents. Mancini's empire crumbled like rotted wood, Rosen's treachery the final blow to its foundation. Arrests were made, deals cut, the festering rot scooped out and flung into the light. Through it all, Samantha and Stella clung to each other, two halves made whole, battered but unbroken. They wept for Adam, for the man Stella had loved, for the life cut so brutally short. But even as they grieved, a tentative hope began to bloom. A fragile, precious thing, unfurling in the ashes of betrayal and loss. They had each other. They had the truth. And they had a future, waiting to be written. Come to Chicago with me, Samantha said one evening, the setting sun painting the sky in strokes of orange and gold. Start over. Leave the ghosts behind. Stella leaned into her sister's side, a smile playing at her lips. The first real smile Samantha had seen since this nightmare began. I'd like that, she murmured. A fresh start. A new life. She laced her fingers with Samantha's. With my sister by my side. Samantha's throat tightened. She squeezed Stella's hand, marveling at the way they fit together. Two puzzle pieces, slotting into place. Twins? Survivors. Family. They could face anything, as long as they had each other. The day they left Savannah dawned bright and clear. They packed Stella's life into boxes, taped up the ghosts and the memories. And as they drove away, the city, receding in the rearview mirror, Samantha felt a weight lift from her shoulders.
a suffocating shroud of grief and fear and rage, peeling away and fluttering into the slipstream. She glanced over at Stella, asleep in the passenger seat. Her sister. Her heart. They'd been through hell. Had stared into the abyss of human cruelty and nearly been consumed. But they'd clawed their way out. Had found each other across decades of separation and secrets. And now they were free. To heal, to laugh, to build something new from the rubble of the past. Samantha smiled, blinking back tears. She'd found her home, her family, her happy ending. And as the miles ticked by, carrying them toward the promise of Chicago and the unknown, Samantha let herself believe that after all the darkness, all the pain, the best was yet to come. The end.